So we're reviewing Troika. Troika. By Nelsonian Arts Council. Wait, it's Troika. 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 That's our exclamation at the end. Exclamation, that's right. Very, right. very important. All right, so I, I looked at this briefly, and it's pretty weird. It's pretty weird, all right. All right. So tell me, I, this was so you suggested this. Yes. T- tell me about this. Okay, well, this is, um, they describe it as being from an alternate world where the British tradition of role-playing games didn't flounder in the 90s. Okay. Apparently. Uh, So this has been compared to David Lynch's Dune. Okay. Right. Uh, Michael Moorcock, um, The Dying Earth, The Book of the New Sun. It made me think of Wizards. Okay. The, the, the I remember movie. Wizards. Um, no Blease, if you know the No Blease role-playing game. Not too well. Uh, okay. Well, it's it's a very a strange setting. It's got fantastic art throughout the book, which is really weird and helps set the setting. And you need everything to help set the setting because there is no setting chapter. Hmm. Uh, you put the setting, the bits of the setting are suggested by the character backgrounds uh, by the spells, it's got some. It's got a lot of magic in it. By the uh, by the enemies, the antagonist list. By the equipment, lots of weird equipment in it. Um, and as it says, the the game. This is a feature, not a bug. The adventure and wonder is in the gaps. Your game will be defined by the way in which you play them in. And then, you know, when it talks about building a character, it says, boldly lay claim to the games you play. Create content recklessly and always write in pen. So this is a game where you and the players sit down and create madness as you go, and you write it down. Um, so you, uh, the system is pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's all played with D6s. Um, when you start the game, you roll to get a uh, character background, and the backgrounds are crazy. You can be a giant, you can be a frog priest, you can be a wizard, you can be a wizard hunter. Some of my favorite are uh, the uh, Fellow of the Peerage of Porters and Basin Fillers. Luggers are servile are a servile group by nature, most often found in the service of others, weighed down by loads that would buckle a donkey. You take pride in this, so much so that everyday assignments of the guild cannot sate your desire to serve, causing you to venture out in search of real challenge for such a talented valet. Okay. Right? okay. So you're a, you're a servant. You want to go out and serve. You could also be a gremlin catcher. You, you know, you professionally catch... Little gremlins who are some sort of household pest. You can be a parchment witch. Check this out. Known for their smooth skin, midnight gatherings, and fear of rain and open fires, the parchment witches are long dead sorcerers who cannot give up the vanities of life. They cover themselves in perfect paper skin, a patiently painted and immaculate folded imitation of life. Intended to hide ancient bone and gristle. I like the dwarf description. The dwarf! Yes, read the dwarf! Dwarf. You are short, hairy, belligerent, alcohol-dependent creature. The latter two may be linked, but you'll fight anyone who suggests as much. Since there are no dwarf women, or men technically, there are no dwarf children, or dwarf families, so you can fully commit yourself to the important dwarfy endeavors of creating fine art and in unusual places. You attempt to find the most unusual places ever seen in all the million spheres. There you go. And that's how you have to put the setting together. Where does this game take place? It takes place in a city named Troika. What do we know about the city? We know that the city is surrounded by giant walls over some sort of abyss. Underneath the city, there is an anti-city with dark reflections of all all the goings on on top of the city underneath. And the city is inhabited by 
witches and wizards and trolls and orcs and, and giants and, and sexless dwarves. And people get from sphere to sphere, which are other worlds existing in the void. They travel by golden barges, golden sail barges that sail the sky. Okay. What does all that mean? I don't know. Troika doesn't know. You have to decide that as a table. It, it's, it's a different kind of role playing game. You're not going to find answers in this book. You're going to find suggestions. You're going to find hints, and you're going to find lots of questions. And you have to sit down and make a world together around the table. It's going to be crazy. Speaking of crazy, they have the craziest initiative system. I said the system was pretty standard, and um, it is, except for the initiative system. They use something that they call the initiative stack, but I like to think of as the initiative sack. So, <laughs> you take a sack, every person involved in the combat gets a color. So you're green, Annie, there you okay. go. I'm involved in the combat too, so I'll get red. We're fighting two enemies, so they each get two tokens of the same color. And then there is a black die, or a black token, which represents the end of the round. These all get thrown into the sack, like this. Give it a shake. Now, who goes first? That's me. I go first. And then after I go... I go again. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> and then... That's the end of the round. It's just me. I get... <laughs> we pick it up and start again. This is so chaotic. I actually really like this. I often don't use an initiative system. I just go with whatever feels natural. But this is just so wonderfully chaotic. You never know what's going to happen. You can't really plan ahead. Um, the rationale that they give in the game is that this system represents hesitation and confusion and, and you don't know what's going to happen hmm. in, in combat. Combat's crazy and wild. And uh, I'm I just really looking forward to seeing how this game plays out. Okay. Okay, excellent. Well, if you didn't show me this, I probably would have never, ever, 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 ever pick it up. Not because, well, yeah, it is because. <laughs> 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 no, just the cover is... I think, I mean, I, I keep saying that art students make this just because I can only imagine like students studying either Picasso, Dali, or some other like s some German expression art or something yeah. like that. Yep. Like it just, it's just, it's like, what if the the writer of Alice in Wonderland decided to do space adventures instead? Right. That's what this. There this, you go. Look at that. You get things like that in there. Really strange art. Yeah, the art's here is really strange. Um, I. You know, if you would have given this to me maybe 20 years ago, when I was really into that stage where I wanted to just try different systems, role-playing systems, I think I would have got into this more. But now the 20-year, like 40-year-old cynical me, <laughs> was like, ah, different, ah, ah. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I'm glad you showed me this. I, I like to know that this exists. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'll ever play it, though, I'll be honest. That's, you know... I have a collection of very strange role-playing games that um, I will probably never get to play. And this will fit perfectly in there, but <laughs> I actually want to play this. I want to see if I can find the right gr bunch of weirdos to play this game with. Okay. Well, stick around. Uh, hopefully, if we find the right group, we okay. could definitely do a, a fun experiment. You know? All right. If you know anything about Troika... Oh, Troika is a Russian word... For a group of three th objects acting in unison. Also for a three-card carriage, but I don't think that's what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if you know anything about it, or if you're weird, give us a comment. Tell us what you think. Yeah, please let us know. Um, if you like it, please convince me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks All for right. watching. Take care.